in the UK, there's no marriage intention. There's no intention. They will date you for eight years. And the guy basically was asking me why I didn't like him. And then he kept asking, asking, and I went, because I don't fancy you. Oh, it's not about too late. When they give you job, they say you are at the door. That's your power. Mm. That's your holy grail. Yes. That's your, are you kidding me? You're a police officer in your village? Mm. Hi guys. Oh, are we talking? Yes. Oh, you yes. Up. Oh, I didn't oh, my God. <laughs>Hi guys, welcome to Niger Girls Dish with Dolako and Diana. Yeah, so this is our podcast and this is our first episode. So today we're going to be talking about, what are we talking about? Today we're talking about dating in Nigeria versus dating in the UK. <sighs> in the book. Yes. So, okay, I'm going to start off. Here's my thing. What I remember about dating in the UK is that it's the ghetto. <clears throat> it's the ghetto just because, okay... Maybe it's not fair because this was a very long time ago. I so have, I was a lot younger. I have recent events. But I changed. feel like it's like, it was like on that Nando's P. Like, oh, let me in Nando's. And some people might say, oh, maybe the caliber of man that I went out with. But I just felt like in Nigeria, people make an effort. The standard is different. The outcome is still stupid. Okay. But I feel like in the UK, people are very um, frugal. Yes. On a level that is quite unfortunate. Nando's? Do you know what? There's worse places than Nando's, you know. Nando's is a step up. When people are going to McDonald's and they're taking you to people, Costa. People, no, sorry. No, stop it. So Costa. Costa coffee. Nobody is taking you to Costa on a date. Are you okay? Has someone taken you to Costa on no, a date? No, because I'm me. Because I'm <laughs> me. They can never take me to Costa on a date. But I know that I've gone to Costa. Okay, look. There was a guy that took me to Richmond Park. Okay. Did he have a picnic basket? Well, no, so the interesting, so my thing is, I like the, it's the thought that counts. So it doesn't even have to be about money like that. Yeah. So this guy, oh God, he, I, I, I just remember, this is a really long time ago, but I remember him putting like wine glasses in his pocket. Then when they were got, no, they were <laughs> glass. And then when we got there, he almost sat down and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like he almost sat down somewhere. So the thing would have broken in his, and uh, his bum bum. But, it, but I remember thinking, oh, this is sweet. But it would have been nicer if, you know, he'd actually gone out and got like the proper picnic basket and like had all the different things. Do you know what I mean? No, my worry is that someone put a glass cup in their back pockets. Well, yes. I mean, it's safe to say it didn't go anywhere. It, uh, it wasn't, it, wa it was only memorable because of the glass, but I've been taking out on a few picnics and I think that's because I like a picnic, mm -hmm. but I didn't end up with those people. So there must be a reason why. I think in the UK, dating is the ghetto because um, people have no real plans for your life. Dating is a sport. Mm -hmm. They need to add it to the Olympics because mm -hmm. people are winning medals at push. Anyways, can I say that? We've well, already yes. said it now, so well, it's tough tea. Mm -hmm. um, whereas dating in Nigeria, it's a different kind of ghetto. It's still the slums, mm -hmm. definitely the slums, but they will take you, they will put effort. They will do fine guy. They will dress up. Okay, so I have something to say about oh, that. Oh gosh. What? Hmm. Once upon a time, time time. Time time. Um, there was, a, this wasn't even a date. How do I tell this story, Jack? Anyway, this wasn't a date. Yeah, exposing yourself. Okay. But, we went for dinner. I can't explain how we went for dinner is because it's just really complicated. Okay. And this was my issue. The, you're with somebody or you're having dinner with someone who feels that they're of a certain caliber, but they still proceed to move mad because of that caliber. So sometimes maybe I'm thinking, this is in London, right? Okay. I'm thinking maybe it's better to just, for the person to take you to Nando's because this case in particular, went and we were having dinner and you know it was all cool or whatever some random there was like a disagreement before and the guy basically was asking me why i didn't like him and i just said as i was eating my chicken that i, I was trying not to answer the question because it was really awkward and then he kept asking asking and i went because i don't fancy you because my thing is, so you're i was on put into a corner see it wasn't a date it's really complicated it wasn't a date but my point is he now goes oh you know who else can take you out to these restaurants who else and that was my point okay. and i said to him uncle maybe <laughs> because you have never <laughs> lived in nigeria what you are doing is small fry okay hey. because if you go to lagos this is nothing i can take myself 
out that's on that a part. date. That's that part. So we need to normalize that as well. Like I just felt like dating was just really weird. Just I think weird. we need to normalize people taking themselves out on dates. So that when a man takes you out, it's not like he's doing you any favors. Yes. It's not like you have not eaten before. Oh, you're like, it's, not, whole it's, menu. it's not like your fridge is empty. This was a choice to come out. Mm. You're sharing time and space with me. It's mm. a privilege. Because I feel like some people are like, imagine a whole me and a whole you. I know, but I can do this by myself. I want to. I'm choosing to go on this date with you. And if you take me somewhere that is nonsense, I'm not coming again. Simple. But then yeah. again, like you said, but is it they got is it Costa? Or that you go to Nobu and they now be telling you, do you know who I am? Or go to Costa and you know that you spent eight pounds and you go home and your 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 pocket is not broken. Exactly. Or the person making you feel like you should be thankful that they're taking you on a date. Which reminds me of something that was on Instagram recently. Uh what's his name? Piles. Plies. Piles. The one that got he removed the thing of his teeth. Plies? And they now look like Plies? Plies? Plows, Plies, Plow. He can his name Plows. Is it pliers? It? Pliers. 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 No, it's you pliers? know the guy. No, you know the guy. Sweetie, He's, you are you are younger than me. Like that's you should the point know this. That's not the point because though. we sound He's like two old women. No, we, I'm a baby old auntie in my spirit. <laughs> like me, I know my anybody that knows me. I'm tired. Ply, pl- pliers. What the guy? You know. Basically said, and I think this is also more of an American thing. Or does it happen here? Because I don't know. Where if you see a whole bunch of black women and then there will be a Caucasian person that will go up to the person and now say, oh my God, what's the occasion? Listen, it is very foreign. That's, that has never happened to me, Sha, because that's weird. It's never happened to me because I also don't move in groups of big, I don't move in okay, big groups yes, of black yes, women, yes. to be honest. So I can't say it's happened to me before. I think, I do think it is um, foreign when a black woman goes to a high-end restaurant or a high-end something um, in the UK, and it's definitely, all women, and it's all it's all black women to be specific, because then you're mm. in that space, and they're like, "Oh, we rarely get your type in here," so they think, "Oh, wow, it must be a treat." No, eating food is not a treat. But I think in Nigeria, though, there's a there's a there's, that thing happens there too. I remember once I went to where was it Radisson, and then we drove up. I was with my cousin, who's a doctor. We drove up, and he was like, "No, we don't allow unaccompanied women." Ashewabi. Oh, is that what you're calling me? That's so happened, it, yeah. So it's kind of like the flip. Over here, it's weird to see us, but over there, it's like, wait, you took yourself out, you can fend for yourself. How? You must be well, an Ashi. I, I feel like that is like certain establishment, establishments where they've been told, oh, if you see a woman by herself, that she's automatically a prostitute. But it's also because the people who are in charge of looking, whether it's the manager or whatever, can't tell what a prostitute actually looks like. Not that the prostitute has a certain okay, look, at this point. But, but the people I'm talking about, there's, you can tell if the girl is there scoping out like one rich daddy that's going to help out. You, you can know, tell. She sits at the bar you, and, Exactly! You know. Whereas if like three girls come there and they want to chill and have drinks, but that's happened to me once before. What's at that? a particular hotel in Nigeria where- Was it Radisson? No, it was uh, Ikuta actually. Oh. And I was coming down the stairs and then they said, Oh, where are you going? See, question. I was just like, who are you talking to? They said, where are you going? I said, down the stairs. I said, to where? The bar. I said, why are you alone? Because I came alone. Like, I didn't even see the questions. And he, so he was like saying, oh, it's not. And I kicked up such a fuss. He was like, ah, oh, madam, I'm sorry, madam, I'm sorry. I'm just like. Yeah, because the thing, they're expecting, they're not expecting a push But then why don't they just wait it? to see the man go up to the woman no, before they start her uh, over? At that point, no, it's too late. It's not about too late. When they give you job, they say you are at the door. That's your power. Mm. That's your holy grail. Yes. That's your, are you kidding me? You're a police officer in your village? Mm. What do you mean? You come into their establishment. You know they think they secretly own it. What do you mean? Ah, please, 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 please. Dating in Nigeria, one thing that I didn't like about it, well, apart from all of it, people are crazy, is, um, what do you call this thing? Where, even if you're just out with someone, you're it's automatically sleeping with them. Yeah. They're automatically your boyfriend. Like, you could just be talking. That's one thing I found very hard when I first moved back to Nigeria. I was just like, this is strange. Someone sees you out once and they're like, oh, don't you know she's dating that guy? And you're thinking, no. No, no, we were just talking. No. It's quite difficult because I think my dating experience in Nigeria was a hot doo-doo mess. Really? Tell us more about that. Listen, listen. It was the ghetto on really? steroids. Mm. Advice: mm. Stay away from people that are creatively inclined because oh. money will mm. We will leave it there. But you yeah, know, I think 
you go out with you can go out with anyone if they look a kind of sort of older than you is the sugar daddy. No, but what if it's my actual daddy? Because what if it's my actual daddy? Because sometimes I go when you say kind of sort of older, like five years older isn't gonna look older. No, excuse me. I'd like to think I look quite youthful. But <laughs> when you, when you, if you if you go out with like an uncle type vibes, what is it? What? Do you know the men that just look like uncles? Even if they're your mate, they just look like uncles. You know the men that just look like uncles? Like they came out the womb looking like an uncle. Okay, oh no. Mm-mm. You know them men? No, I don't, they're, but they're I don't friends, know them. But, they, but people just assume that there's more. And to have a male friend in your 30s, apparently you're sleeping with all of them. Yes. That's a problem too. That is weird. That whole, that whole, the, that thought process in Nigeria, Till today, I will never understand yeah. about you're automatically sleeping with someone just because you're hanging out with them. And I think dating in Nigeria, I think it leads to marriage. How happy the marriage is, that's between them mm. and God. In the UK, there's no marriage intention. There's no intention. They will date you for eight years. Oh, After they've dated you for eight years, they're not tell you, you know, I think I want a kid. Oh, oh. Excuse me, I'm not understanding. Oh. You want a child, you better go and meet Amaka that is interested in giving you a baby or Bola that is interested in giving you a baby because Diana is not giving you a baby unless you marry her. Just FYI. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just keeping it real. The truth is in the UK, dating is the ghetto. In Nigeria, dating is the ghetto. But it's two different types of ghetto. But it's not all bad. So anyone that's watching this, don't be, or listening, don't be afraid. Because I just, this didn't come across very well. These are the rules. Do you know what? If you want to survive dating in Nigeria or dating in the UK. Be slightly crazy. Okay, yeah, no, sorry. No, 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 actually, no. <laughs> Small praise can help your ministry. Mm-hmm. I think what you need to do is be clear about what you want. Mm. Don't walk into anything thinking, oh, we're going to see how it goes. See how it goes is where the devil swims. Oh. That's seeing how it goes. Yeah, I think devil. that's the thing. Know, know what you want. So no one can come and swindle you. Also, don't go in there acting like, don't, you've only been eating, eating, I say eating. Hey, mm. God, English is a hard language. You've only been eating Indomie your whole life. Don't allow someone show you life and then they're now beholding you. You'll be under under on armpits. Well, you know, some people just go on dates just to get fed. Ooh. You know what, though? I don't do it, but I'm not mad at it. Because guess what? If you... No, no, Doc, I'm not mad at it. Girls, listen. <laughs> if there's that man that his brain used to touch and every day wants to disturb your life, eh, chop his money. But I just feel like it's you sense. send me the food. Why do I have to be in your company? That's that to part. eat the food. That's why I can't do it because my time is very precious. At least over here, there's delivery. In oh. Nigeria, there's um. They have Jumia, Jumia food now. Jumia. God bless. So I sent me Jumia food before. There you I go. I was shocked. Or they... send your driver with a package. Oh, they with send a package. driver with a package. Yes. Send your driver with a package. But yes, ladies, know what you want when you go into these um pools of dating. Mm. Don't allow them show you good time without you knowing what good time was before, so oh you're not goodness. trapped. Mm-hmm. Um, be safe. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What else is there? And man, know your worth. Understand that you are a prize, and you two want to win. Don't go in there thinking that just you want to win. I'm a prize, but I want to win a prize too. So if you meet a man and he looks like he's making sense, go in there with your demands. Have requirements because men don't have requirements. They are allowed to, but they don't. On that note, I'm well, I mean, honest. I'm out of the dating game. So I don't I'm really, in it, I swimming in the pool of I, possibility. I, I, <laughs> I don't really remember what it was like, but from what I can see, it's the hood. It's the ghetto. it was the hood. It is still the ghetto. But good luck. We don't have choice. Thank you for the luck, sister. Yeah. So um, catch us on our next podcast. Yep. Bye. See you then. <laughs> I quit. <laughs>